Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're going to be going through um, how to calculate a load factor and why it's important and then how to apply it in, in uh, practical uses. Uh, the first page that we have up here is just giving a basic description of power versus energy. They can be confused at times, the difference between power and energy. If you look at an electric bill, you'll see that it's billed by kilowatt hours, the amount of energy consumed over time. One kilowatt hour is equal to 1,000 watt hours. An example would be if you had a toaster oven, which was rated to have 1,000 watts, and you used it for one hour, that would be one kilowatt hour. Make sense? Power is instantaneous usage, while energy, watt hours or kilowatt hours, is power used over time. So if you're looking at power, you're looking at a kilowatt. That's an instantaneous measurement. When you're looking at energy, it's going to be power over time. Make sense? Load factor measures the efficiency of the use of available power over time. So if you have a high load factor, it's telling you that that energy is being used efficiently. If you have a low load factor, it's saying it's being used inefficiently. What does that mean? Well, with the utilities, they'll measure peak demand, and they typically do it during a hot day in the summer. So they'll take a measurement, and this is what they would be anticipating is going to be the peak demand, peak power needed for that particular location. Might be 100 kilowatts. That would be the peak demand. But if over time you're not using anywhere near that peak demand, you're using a much smaller amount, only 15, 20% of what the peak would be, and you're consistent over time, that's inefficient use. The utility has set aside, they, they believe this is what you, you may need, but you only use a very small portion of it. So that's why a low load factor is inefficient, and it would be translated to a higher price for the cost of electricity for a supplier. If they had to now obtain supply, uh, uh, electricity and, and contract with you, a certain price over time, well, they're going to have to take into account what the demand is, because that's what the utility is going to be building. And there's different aspects of that. With the delivery charge, it's going to be affected by the, the peak demand, what that load is going to anticipate to be. So that's the basics there. Now, looking at a practical example, We've got an invoice here. This is actually Continental Inn, Inns in Pennsylvania. On the first page, it shows you that peak demand, it keeps moving on me, stop. <laughs> peak demand is 115 kilowatts. Go down to the second page. It shows, now there's different things that are important. If I want to know what the demand is, and I want to know what the time frame is, because again, if I'm looking at energy, it's power over time. In this case, I see that the time frame is from September 5th to October 7th. In days, how many days would that be? 32. 32. There's 30 days in September, starting from the 5th to the 30th, 25 days, and then going to the 7th of October. So the total number of days is 32. The actual um, energy that was used is shown here, 30,000 kilowatt hours. And they, the uh, utility was charging them 6.72 cents. So those are some numbers that we are able to glean from that invoice to be able to use a tool that you'll find in your sales tools. It's called Load Factor Calculator. Can we go to that? Okay. So. We have the days in the period. How many days were in that period? 32. 32. So we put 32 in there. It shows the hours automatically, 768 hours. 
The demand, what was the demand? One fifteen. One fifteen. Yeah. So we put in the one fifteen. And what was the actual uses in kilowatt hours? Thirty thousand. Put thirty thousand in. Oh, you see that red in the bottom? That's saying warning. Many suppliers are going to reject this deal. Why? Because the load factor is thirty four percent. It's hard to read in that red. The load factor is 34%. For many suppliers out there, when the load factor is below 35, they're going to reject the deal. Now, there are a few suppliers, direct energy in particular. Direct energy will accept anything. And that's good to know. Um, and trust will pretty much accept anything. Good to know. But all the other suppliers out there, if you have a load factor 34, 34 is right at the edge. Some may, it may slip through, but it may not. So if I'm working with a client, well, first of all, I'm an analyst. I'm trying to help my client. And being able to help my clients, I need to know what's the best vehicle to use to obtain pricing. Now, in this instance, because that load factor is really low, if I send that out for custom pricing, will I get a high price or a low price? <laughs> really high. Because yes, why? It's inefficient use of energy. Okay, so if I'm submitting it to a custom price, I know it's going to be uncompetitive. So my best option is going to be using a matrix. But in many instances, the other suppliers are going to reject it because the load factor is below 35. But I know direct energy is going to accept it. Now, I've done this many times with clients. Say Champion comes in with below bid. It's 34. I've had some instances where that slipped through, but other instances when it's not. Um, I would not just automatically put in through Champion and pray that it's going to go through. Because if it doesn't go through and I have to go back to the client a week or two later, I have lost credibility. So what do I do? I tell the client what the, the truth is. This is the situation. You have an inefficient use of energy. Your load factor is below what is acceptable to many suppliers. The low bidder right now is Champion. They're offering a rate of 6.1 cents. That's the low bid. But they may not accept the deal when we submit it. On the other hand, Direct Energy is offering a rate of 6.4 cents. It's lower than the utility rate. It's a good hedge for you. Uh, and you know it's going to go through. So this is your choice. We could take a chance and submit it to Champion and hope that it will go through. But if it gets rejected, then we know we have to go back and use direct energy. Now, why was I upfront and being honest? Right, so I'm, I'm not going to lose credibility. Always be truthful with people. You have to know what you're doing to be able to give them the facts. But once you know the facts, share it with your clients. They'll appreciate it. They'll appreciate that you're trying to do what's best for them. Okay? So in this, in this instance, the Load factor being 34 would have let me know custom pricing is not going to be effective. Uh, the matrix is going to be best, but in, th in this instance, direct energy is the only choice, maybe Entrust also, uh, where I know I'm going to get a good contract. Now, so a flip of the coin. Say I had a load factor where this person had the same 115 kilowatts, but they instead of using 30,000, they were using 60,000 and they really are efficiently using their energy. Now in that instance, if I'm going up against competition and my competition is using the matrix, what should I do? I should custom price it. And there, you know, there are instances where you have suppliers, and I know um, Alex will know this, um, that you have some instances where suppliers will have thresholds of what they'll accept for a custom deal. Might be uh, 500,000 annual and you'll only have 350000 But if you have Alex go to that supplier and say, listen, this particular client has a very um, high load factor. They're very efficient in their use. I know it's going to come in with a low rate, and I know the other suppliers out there are offering a matrix, or their matrix is lower than yours, and if you custom it, I know you're going to get the deal. 
would you accept this deal? In most instances, they will. Even though it's below their threshold, they'll know that it's worth their time. Make sense? Uh -huh. This is part of being an analyst. Now, let's go back to that, those invoices. So this instance, I'm dealing with Continental. They've got one location, and the load factor wasn't particularly good. But let's look at the second invoice. Second invoice, in this case, their peak demand is 64.8 kilowatts. Let's go to the second page. It's the same time frame, September 5th through October 7th, and they're using 29,200 kilowatt hours. So let's go back to the load factor. Let's pl plug in 32. Let's plug in 64.8. And let's plug in 29,200. Oh my goodness, it's popped up to 42.9. Now, since this is the same decision maker, it's the same legal entity, Continental Ends, and now I submit on a matrix for those two locations, and in this case, it's about a million kilowatt hours total, annual, they go, all the suppliers will accept it. So by knowing what I'm doing and using all the information, I'll know what is going to be the best options, the best tools to be using to obtain the best possible price for the client. In this case, 42.9 is, a, is a, a pretty, it's, a, it's a, a low factor which is a little below normal, but it's not horrible. So the matrix price in this instance is going to be fairly close to what the custom prices are. So in an instance like this, I would generally keep direct energy in my pocket and I would send out for a custom price for everybody else and I would try to see what's going to be the best option. Because it could be custom priced, or it could be the matrix. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Like it. Thank you. Thank you.